felt letter board has three main parts, a picture frame, a board, and felt. This isn't rocket science, it's not even science. I'm chopping four one by twos on the miter saw. These will be used to create the picture frame. I'm going to make a cutout in the frame to allow for the felt board to sit inside of it nicely. I'm gonna to need to use the table saw for that. If you don't have a table saw, there's absolutely nothing you could use instead. Prior to the advent of table saws, everybody just sat around and complained that they didn't have a table saw. Now that our pieces are prepped and ready to carry the burden of a new felt board life, we need to cut these miters. Set your miter saw to 45 degrees, and we're going to chop in starting at the outside edge. I'm gonna sneak up on my line, similar to what a stalker would do just before they, Never mind. repeat that cut for all four pieces, please. Measure across 13 and a quarter inches on the top of the frame, and then carry the mark on all sides of the frame. We're gonna cut in like this. Quick unpro tip, lay it how you cut it, flip it on its belly, turn 180 degrees, cutting such a breeze. <clears throat> repeat for all the other pieces of the frame. One, dos, trois, quatre. Quadrilingual with Rick? No. This was supposed to be 12 by 12, but it's 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter because I'm bad at math. But that's okay because it's still square and that's all that we need. You are all that I need. In hindsight, I should have left a little bit more room for felt thickness. Also in hindsight, I should have just bought a felt letter board on Amazon for $30. Link in the description. I'm measuring in a quarter inch and carrying it end to end. And this is gonna sit inside the frame. The frame is like the Bjorn and the board is like the baby. Felt board Bjorn. This one's free, but not the next one. I'll be using what's called a router to route out slots for the felt to sit in. Unfortunately, this is a limited edition router forged in the fires of Mount Makita. Only five remain. So if you wanted to do this yourself, you would have to use some sort of primitive tool. I don't even know. I don't even know what you would use. That sucks. And now my friends, it's time for the main event, the Wawa meatball sub, if you will. I've created what woodworking snobs call a jig, which is a stupid name for a template. It consists of two pieces of half inch plywood on the outside of my board to keep the router on a level surface the entire time. I screw them in very tight against the outside of my board so that it doesn't slip when I'm routing. The center point of each routed slot is three eighths of an inch apart from each other. And I'll be using the three quarter inch plywood fence as a guide to make these routed slots. Once I route a slot, I'm gonna make a mark three eighths of an inch from the center line of that. And then I'm gonna hammer it up into place and make the next slot. And then I'm gonna just keep doing that over and over and over again. I'm using a 1 8 diameter double flute straight bit with a quarter inch shank. You don't know what that means. That's okay. I mean, I don't even know what that means, so don't worry about it. Well, it's about that time. We're about halfway through the video, arguably the most interesting part of the video. So I think we should probably get to talking about that, uh, that sponsor, our sponsor. We don't have sponsors <laughs> and we probably never will now. So. Okay, our board is ready. I just need to clean out all of these slots with a screwdriver and a shop vac because hammering it did nothing. It did so much nothing, I figured I'd try again, and it still did nothing. This must be how my wife feels about me, with everything. Oh well, at least we're pretty. Just gonna sand the edges a little bit. It's not really necessary, but this guy goes the extra mile, if you know what I mean. What does he mean? It took me a while to figure out the best method for pushing the felt into the slots. And finally, I arrived at this. Get two bendy metal rulers and a flathead screwdriver. Jam the felt in with the flathead, then push the entire row in with one of the bendy metal rulers, and then push the screwdriver in the next row to get it started, and then use your second bendy metal ruler to push it in all the way, and repeat. It's beautiful, really, it's beautiful. Now you might be asking, is this really the best way to do it? But a much more appropriate question would be, if you knew where the Power Rangers ended up today, after all was said and done, would you still want to be that Power Ranger? Their lives peaked at Power Rangers and they're still cameoing. And Trini's dead, guys. Not me. No, not me. I never thought I'd make it this far, so I'm kind of winging it. I'm super gluing the back of the felt to the back of the board, cutting any excess as I go. And at this point, I'm getting a little bit concerned about where I folded the felt. It's thick and I'm not sure it's gonna fit in the frame. Which brings us to the frame. We're going to assemble it using glue and brad nails. If you don't have special clamps for frames like I don't, just use some regular old pressure clamps. It's not great because the frame can still slip a little bit. This is all we have, so. Look, I'm not happy about it either. 
going to repeat that for all four corners and then give it a light sanding. I'm going to use the router and give it the old 45 special. If you don't have a router, you can just use sandpaper in your hand. <laughs> and finally, I'm going to place the completed felt board into the frame and trim off any excess felt. And that is how you build a felt letter board.